Hello and welcome to this presentation on tides and their role on the coast. In the lesson, you are going to be doing these four questions that you can see on this page here. So this presentation is designed to give you the knowledge and understanding that you need to be able to do this in the class without any um, notes referred to. Okay, so my expectations um, for of you are that you will read through and listen to this presentation and as you go through each slide, you will take notes um, which will be present in your folder when I check in the lesson and in the lesson you will be doing a number of activities using that knowledge as well as these four questions. Okay, so the presentation is going to provide you with information to do the following. To be able to define what tides are and how they influence coastal processes, to be able to explain why tides occur, You'll be able to recognise from diagrams different types of tides and be able to say why their tidal ranges differ. Lastly, you'll be able to tell me about how the shape of the coast can influence the tidal range. Okay, so that knowledge can be shown clearly here in these four questions. So have a read through these questions, make sure you know what we're aiming for and then move onwards with the information. Each slide I will then tell you and talk you through what is presented and then go through the different um diagrams etc okay so please make notes as you're going um as detailed as possible okay off we go so starting off first of all with a definition of what tides are your textbook and your chief examiner defines tides as the periodic rise and fall in the level of the sea periodic meaning regular and we get two high tides a day as you'll find out in a moment why uh, tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun on the oceans. Because the moon is closer to the earth, it has the greatest influence than the sun does. So the moon attracts or pulls the water to the side of the earth that is closest to it. This gravitational pull creates an outward bulge or high tide in the ocean close to the moon and another one on the other side of the earth away from the moon. And then in between this, the bulge is compensated by the intervening areas being drained of their water and they experience a low tide. And then as the moon orbits the earth, the high tide follows it. Okay, the diagram on the next slide shows you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if we look at diagram A, you can see that you've got the moon and then the earth and the gravitational pull of the moon is causing there to be a bulge on the side highest sorry, closest towards the moon, here, and on the opposite side, here. Okay, so the water is causing it being um, pushed into an outward bulge, and this is due to the gravitational pull of the moon. In between, we have got areas of low tide. Okay, so this is where the water is drained and co is compensating for this outward bulge on the areas that are in alignment with the moon. Here you can see a diagram of the tidal cycles and the lunar month. So we have two types of tides, spring tides and neap tides. And you can see on the diagram at the bottom here, okay, that you've got and the tidal range show. So spring tides have the highest tidal range and neap tides had the smallest tidal range. Okay, And this is occurring over the lunar month. And the lunar month, the time it takes the moon to orbit the Earth. And this is 29 days. And a tidal cycle is the time taken between two successive high tides. And this works at about 12 hours and 25 minutes. So approximately, we get two high tides a day near enough. So we're going to look at spring tides and neap tides in a little more detail um, and about how the moon and the sun have to be aligned to cause these. We're going to start with spring tide. So, as you can see from the diagram, we're looking here at spring tide. The moon and the sun are in alignment with the Earth. Okay, so we've got them in alignment. As a result, you've got the uh, gravitational pull of the sun and the gravitational pull of the moon, and that creates the biggest bulge of water and the highest tide. Okay, so these big bulges here. At this time, the high tides are at the highest, and the lowest tides are at their lowest. 
So the difference between and the vertical distance between your high and low tides is at its greatest. So it's called the maximum tidal range. And this occurs every 14 to 15 days, so twice in a lunar month. Okay, So that's spring tide, so it's when you've got the sun, the moon in alignment, causing the biggest bulge of water on the sides closest to the moon. And then in between you're going to get your lowest, and so you'll get your maximum tidal range. The next type of tide is the neap tide. So this is this one here, so diagram C. And what you can see is that the moon and the sun are at right angles to each other. So their gravitational pulls interfere with each other, and this gives the lowest high tides and the highest low tides. So you get the smallest tidal range. And they occur midway between the spring tides. Okay, so in your cycle you're going to have neap tide, spring tide, neap tide, spring tide. Okay, so going back to that diagram, you can see here that you've got a spring tide with the moon and the sun in alignment. Following that, you've got a neap tide with the moon and the sun at right angles. Then it repeats, okay, the moon and the sun are in alignment. Okay, then we have them at right angles again, so we get a neap tide, and then we have them in alignment again, so we get a spring tide. Okay, so we get highest tides, lowest, or oh sorry, highest tidal range, lowest tidal range for neap tides. Okay, so just to be clear, the tidal range, the vertical distance between low and high tide. So spring tides have the high tides at their highest, the low tides at their lowest, so there is the biggest distance between the tidal ranges. In contrast, neap tides have the their high tides are at their lowest point, the low tides are at the lowest, so there is the smallest tidal range. We also need to consider how the shape of the coast influences the tidal range. The first factor to consider is the idea of proximity to land and what the ocean bed is like, so the depth of the ocean bed. In the North Sea, as the tidal wave travels south into the English Channel, the water moves into an area where both the width and depth of the sea decreases. So we've got out here an open ocean, moving down here, and then we've got the narrowing of the channel and also the depth of the actual um, water decreases. So this results in a rapid build up or funneling of water and this gives a higher tidal range than you would get out in open sea. Also estuaries um, can also play a role in causing higher tidal ranges. For example when the tide rises in the Bristol Channel it is confined in the narrowing Severn estuary and we can get a 13 centimetre tidal range. At key points of the year, this sudden rise and influx of water can send a tidal wave of water rushing up river, and this is called a tidal bore, or um, the seven bore. This is a one metre high wave of water, and it moves at a speed of 30 kilometres per hour. And you can Google on YouTube seven bore, and you'll get quite a few people surfing up it. Okay, so why do we need to know about tides? Well, they have a really important influence on coastal processes, and by coastal processes, I mean erosion and subwear aerial weathering. So firstly, the tidal range can affect the vertical distance over which erosion can happen. If there is a small tidal range, then the power of the waves, and hence erosion, is only concentrated on a relatively narrow section of the coast, and this can lead to the production of very relatively narrow beaches, such as holiday resorts bordering the Mediterranean. Secondly, if there is a large tidal range, then vast areas of sand get exposed at low tide. Um, so when this sand dries out on shore, winds can then transport the sand and sand dunes can be formed. Thirdly, the tidal range affects the length of time that the littoral zone, this is the narrow zone between the high and low water mark, is exposed to subaerial weathering. So the greater the tidal range, the greater the amount of subaerial weathering on the coast. And lastly, the speed of incoming and outgoing waves has an important scouring effect on the coastline. If the tide comes in really fast, the coast will experience increased scouring. Okay, so that completes this presentation. Um, and I've come back full circle to the questions from the start. So hopefully you haven't listened to me, read through the information, and made notes as you've gone through on those key aspects. You should now have the knowledge and understanding to answer the following questions. What are tides? How do they influence coastal processes? Can you explain why tides occur? Studying figures 1a and 1b, can you identify which type of tide is a neap tide, which type of tide is a spring tide? 
can you explain the contrast in the tidal ranges associated with them? So that's explaining why one has the lowest tides or the highest tides. And then lastly, how does the shape of the coast influence the tidal range? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I will look forward to seeing a lesson when we will be doing these exam questions without your notes. Okay, so please make sure that as well as taking the notes and listening to this, you do actually understand and have this knowledge in your head. And we will be testing it using these questions as well as a range of other strategies. Okay, good luck. I look forward to seeing the lesson.